Nikon is dying. You've probably heard people reporting that and we're gonna be talking about that today, but we're also gonna be talking about how we think we can save it. And before we dig in, let's take a minute and thank our sponsor, Squarespace. Whether you need a website, portfolio, whatever you need, you can make it happen with Squarespace and it's as easy as dragging and dropping to make that happen. And you can get a 14 day free trial. There's a link in the description below. Go to squarespace.com slash Chelsea and you can get 10% off with the coupon code Chelsea. And I kind of just released some devastating financial data Yeah. that makes it look like the entire camera division could possibly shut down. We're going to go over that, those numbers in detail. But first I want to address what was going to be a really common question, which is like, who cares about this? People are always like, just get out there and shoot. The answer is that you should care. You should, because cameras are a long-term investment. You, Most people hold on to their cameras for two to five years, but once you buy into a camera system, people stick with it for decades. Yeah. Like 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. And if you're buying a new camera or thinking about switching systems, understanding the chances of success or death for your lens system and your camera company, that's kind of a key decision that could save you thousands of dollars if you make the right choice or cost you thousands if you make the wrong choice. Yeah, definitely as a consumer, I think people should care. But I also think just as a photographer, people should care. The photography community is actually really close-knit and we care about everybody in it. We want all of the companies to do well. We want photographers to do well. And so when we hear something like this, I think it jostles the entire photography community. We also know the camera companies listen. Mm -hmm. We talked to the executives who saw some video and tried to implement some piece of that. This has happened repeatedly. So we can actually shape what your next Nikon cameras will look like. And we want you to be part of that. First, let's go back and just show that some of the predictions we've made in the past have been accurate. Maybe we know a little bit about what we're actually talking about here. We <laughs> predicted in 2016 that Nikon would not be able to keep up as they transitioned into mirrorless cameras. A quote, they're a hardware manufacturer. They don't know software. This has proven to be true. Yeah, it's unfortunate. A lot of things are based in software now, so the fact that they weren't developing that was was worrisome. Nikon just hasn't moved along, and they probably won't. In hindsight, from three and a half years ago, this has kind of proven to be true. They just haven't been able to keep up. In 2016 later, I released the death of a consumer camera video, and I said that the Nikon One system was dead, even though Nikon had not declared that, and lots of people were angry at me for saying that. Since then, Nikon hasn't released any new Nikon One gear. And if you listened to me in 2016, you wouldn't have wasted any additional money. We also predicted Nikon's mirrorless problems. We noticed that while every other company was making a shift towards serious mirrorless, Nikon and Pentax were both kind of doing nothing. And that's why in the slide that we had from 2018, we had Canon, Fuji, Olympus, Sony Alpha, and Panasonic, all in different sort of mirrorless groups. Only Nikon and Pentax were stuck in the corner doing nothing. And they characterized Nikon as being the underdog going into what would become the mirrorless wars of 2018 and 2019. I said they haven't demonstrated good phase detect mirrorless autofocus, and then I asked you how live view on your D850 was. I love the D850, but it was not good. No. It's not good. And that is basically what they were building their mirrorless platform on was the live view from their SLRs. They needed to be investing in that and they weren't. And what happened was their Z-mount cameras weren't ready because they had to rush it. They tried to pull everything together last minute. I also predicted a massive Nikon Z7 price drop when they launched it in October of 2018. I said the Z7 price point is unjustified. It's not going to sell at $3,400. I would bet by March 2019, we'll see the prices on the Z7 down to about $2,800. And I just checked here in November 2019, and it's selling for $2,700. Without the adapter, it's $2,400. But in a very practical way, if you listen to these predictions, it could have saved you $700 or $1,000, depending on whether you needed that adapter or not. That's a lot of money. We did not predict that Nikon's predictions would be even worse than they thought. They are officially going to be unprofitable in 2020 for the first time in a long time. Nikon predicts they will lose about 10 billion yen. That's tough. Companies don't continue on if they're losing money. Yeah, and the rest hard. of Nikon can't support it. The camera division is about 40% of Nikon now. It used to be much higher, but the industry keeps shrieking, shrinking and the camera division keeps shrinking. So something has to change 
drastically. Oh. So why is this happening? Part of it is that Nikon has misdirected some of their resources. They've gone in some strange and expensive directions, like the entire Nikon 1 series that they produced for a little while and then completely ditched. It was a mirrorless cameras with small sensors, and yeah. now they're mostly gone. The Nikon DL, which they designed and hyped and sold, they canceled everybody's pre-orders and just said, we're never shipping these. Yeah, and the, the Nikon Key Mission, which was like a GoPro, but... It was kind of at the tail end of that trend, and there were already a bunch of Chinese manufacturers making far more affordable versions. It just didn't take off. All that money was just wasted. And then, of course, most recently, they put so much energy into their Nikkor 58mm F095S lens, put it up for pre-order, and then mysteriously stopped taking pre-orders for it, Such saying demand was too high. But I don't believe that. Another concerning sign at Nikon is the number of layoffs that they've had. The staff numbers in 2010 were 17,000 employees, and by 2019, that number has gone down to 10,000. I've been through layoffs at big companies before, and at first, you're trimming fat. You're able to get rid of that annoying employee that you didn't really like anyway and just call it a layoff. It's harsh. But when you have laid off 40% of your staff, you're no longer trimming fat. You're cutting into the meat and it hurts. And that kind of shows as we look at the revenue, expense, and profit chart for Nikon from 2015 to 2020. Revenue, profit, expenses, things are scaling down. By more than half in the last five years, dipping, of course, into unprofitable in their 2020 predictions. But the real driving factor here is the drop in revenue. And that's not Nikon's fault. The entire camera industry is going down. Everybody yeah. is seeing dropping revenue. So even though Nikon has been cutting expenses rapidly, they haven't been able to cut expenses as fast as their revenue has been dropping, and hence, suddenly, they're unprofitable. So what can they do? Either they can add more revenue or cut even faster than they're already cutting. What is the future for them? What do we think is going to happen? What direction should they move in? So coming up, we're going to be talking about the direction Nikon should go in, and that is possibly making a D860, sticking with those DSLRs, making a D760. But first, we'll talk about our sponsor, Squarespace, who pulls us towards profitability, and they can do the same for you. If you make your own Squarespace portfolio, you can highlight your best work so people aren't just seeing it chronologically. They're seeing the photos that you want them to see first, and you can have pricing pages, you can sell your prints, and it's so easy to do. If you can drag and drop, you can make a Squarespace website, and their templates are beautiful and professional looking. You can try a free 14-day trial, no credit card needed. We have a link down in the description below, and go to squarespace.com slash Chelsea. If you decide you'd like to buy it, you can get 10% off with the coupon code Chelsea. Thanks, Squarespace. Saving monies. Okay, so you used a little bit of maths, and you tried to extrapolate what it would be like in 2021, 2022. It's bad. Just looking at how the camera industry will continue to fall, that's mm -hmm. kind of unavoidable. Nikon is going to go farther and farther underwater, and that's not a situation any company wants to be in. Nikon has already announced that there will be, in my interpretation, more layoffs and less research and development. And I'm saying my interpretation because I read their financial reports and statements, and companies tend to use guarded sort of disguised language they don't say we're just doing massive layoffs they say things like we're going to take further steps to continue cost structure reform that's a direct quote from nikon as is this we will review production and marketing structure improve sales expense and r d efficiency yeah efficiency is a scary word digging into nikon's own numbers nikon themselves are predicting a shrinking market share for them. The whole market is shrinking, but they are predicting that they will get a smaller and smaller part of that. So there's a smaller pie, smaller pieces, they're cutting sales, and they're cutting R&D. I know it's a little bit depressing, but I do think that there's some hope. The brand equity for Nikon is incredible. Who doesn't trust a Nikon camera? My Nikon D850 was one of my favorite cameras of all time. Um, they have a ton of cash. They have $3.8 billion. So they do still have money to make something happen. There's hope they could develop a new product. And also Japanese companies fight. They don't just tend to give up and roll over on the company and get out while they can. They don't want to lay off everyone. And we think that they could try to stick things out and stay around a little bit to see if they can make something happen. And also the Z firmware 
update was a good sign. Moving forward, that's progressive. That's a step towards the future. So if they can keep up with those firmware updates and use some of that money, some of that cash to develop something new and then use that brand equity, that recognizable, trustworthy Nikon brand to develop a new product, they might be able to pick things up and stay alive in a shrinking industry. So here's our three-part plan to fix Nikon. <laughs> cash in, build up, and cut out. By cash in, I mean, let's make some money off of all those people who already own Nikon DSLRs. We're talking about F mount bodies. We're not talking about trying to sell them on Z mount. That's hard to yeah. get people to switch to a new lens mount, to switch to mirrorless. Just give them what they actually want, which are DSLRs. Nikon already announced the D6. They don't know the price, but I'm going to suggest a high price. Let's go high end. Let's charge them $7,000. Sure. A lot. That's higher than before, but Nikon needs the money. They need an influx of cash to stay afloat. It's sort of life or death now, but I would pull out all the stops on that. See if you can get it up to 16 frames per second with the mechanical shutter and offer a high 20 frames per second with the electronic shutter. It seems like that's what Canon is going to do, so you're going to have to at least match them. And then you've developed this great tech for the Z-mount system, sensor stabilization, this like great video. Pull that into the D6 and make the ultimate DSLR of all time. And the camera I know you and I really want would be a Nikon D860. We call the D850 the greatest DSLR of all time. It's an, I haven't even sold mine yet. I know I, know I told people I changed systems, but I still long for it and I still use it too. I just love it so much. I know. I was like, Chelsea, is it okay if I send this off to Kate? No! And you're like, not yet. Don't touch just it. Another I day. love it. <laughs> Again, let's raise the price on this. I think we could ask $4,500 for the ultimate DSLR. Let's take that Sony 60 megapixel sensor from the A7R4 and put it in a D850 body. How great would that be? Just give me the option to not shoot 60 megapixels, please. But the D850 does that, so the D860 could do that yes, too. Yes, do that. And then cram in the sensor stabilization, that awesome video capabilities from the Z7, and a little computational photography that would give you infinite dynamic range. Just give us the option that of image cool. averaging for landscape photographers, especially even just those working on a tripod to make the enthusiasts want to dig deep into their pockets and pay for it. I would buy it. And then for all the portrait and wedding photographers out there who, for whom the D750 has become an absolute staple, update it. Mm -hmm. Give it like a better touchscreen capabilities, a faster processor in there, better autofocus, put in the sensor stabilization that they're just longing for looking at that A7 Mark III. Make an A7 III killer, but in a DSLR body that works with everybody's existing Nikon lenses, and you will have a really fast seller that you will make a lot of money from. I think so, and people are still so hesitant to switch over mirrorless, and I do tell some people to wait still. Then build, if you build it. They will come, Tony. So those DSLRs are a quick way to cash in from the existing customer base, but it's clear Nikon has built out the Z-mount system and they need to continue building that out for the future. I suggest they actually bring down the prices on these. I would love to see a full-frame Nikon Z5 priced at about $800 for the body. That's cheaper than anybody else's new full-frame cameras, but we need a camera that people can jump into because people most people want to spend like 400 to 500 dollars but a lot of people will spend up to a thousand dollars and Nikon doesn't have an answer for those people in their mirrorless system just yet yeah make it a low-end sensor 20 megapixel full frame sensor like you had in the d5 for example give it a low frame rate I don't care four frames per second don't put in sensor stabilization make it just HD not 4k but more important than anything hit that price point and you'll notice in my little mock-up graphic here. I took out the electronic viewfinder. We don't need that. Just give us a rear screen. This is for people picking up a camera for the first time. They can upgrade later if they want something like an electronic yeah, viewfinder. Get them into the system. And then we were at Costco last night, just checking don't it out because we'd never been in a Costco. And <laughs> we noticed that they had like $400 Nikon D3500s on display there. And people seemed interested in them. They were looking at them and it's because of that price point. We need to hit that $400 price point. It's silly that Nikon is selling their old DSLR mounts. Now they've already invested in creating APS-C cameras and lenses for the Z-mount. 
it's not a decision I would have made. But now that it's there, we might as well try to get the most out of it and transfer those D3500 customers over to a new Z30. It doesn't have to be more expensive just because it's mirrorless. In fact, mirrorless is simpler. It doesn't need an optical viewfinder. It doesn't need a prism. It doesn't need a mirror. It doesn't even need a mechanical shutter. You can take a D3500 and strip it down, increase your profit margin, and still sell it with a lens for 400 bucks. That's what they should be doing right now. And then package it with their 50 to 250 telephoto lens and have a $600 price point. Those are your best buy kits. Those are your target kits. Those are your Costco kits. Yeah. You have that shelf space. That retail shelf space is extremely valuable. That's a big part of what Nikon has as well as the brand recognition. Get new mirrorless cameras on the shelves. When people pick them up, they won't feel nearly as awkward and unfamiliar unfamiliar as a DSLR with the optical viewfinder that's just so far removed from the smartphone removed. experience that people have today. Absolutely. And they'll be in your Z-mount system, which you've decided is the future. And then I have an idea. It's a little crazy. Your cool pick success with Nikon was so good. Why not make one for Gen Z, the Coolpix Z, for a generation that has never really known analog and has been on their phone since they were babies, practically. Make it Android. Make it touchscreen. You don't need a viewfinder. Make it have apps. You could pair up with someone like Samsung, who made something similar already, but was just a little ahead of their time. Make sure it has a flip screen for the selfies. Really important. No SD card. They don't, like, kids don't do that. They don't deal with that kind of thing. And use an internal battery. If you have to take out the battery and charge it, that's just foreign to them. Use USB-C charging and then have some kind of connectivity, not just to their phones, not just instantly to the internet, but to each other. The devices could communicate with Wi-Fi, wi cellular, and they could be able to share things instantly. It's a camera for a new generation. I know a lot of people think kids just want to use their phones, but as a photographer with a teenager, my daughter and her friends ask to use cameras all the time, and where it falls apart is when they have to transfer, transfer the files to get them to their phone. And it's like, they don't understand the air gap. I get people that own flower shops, people that own bakeries. So many, uh, I, my gym owner asked me, what camera do I get, but I don't wanna really learn this, that, and the other. And what do I tell them other than just stick with your phone? If they don't wanna pick up a DSLR, they don't have a computer, you know, to put the SD card into. There's no option for people. Like, be the one that presents that option. I also think Nikon needs to release new S lenses that are inexpensive. They still don't have an inexpensive nifty 50. I'm suggesting a 50 millimeter F2 since they already have a 50 millimeter F1.8, but make it $200 instead of the five or $600 that the F1.8 model is. Have an inexpensive 24 to 120 F4 at $1,000. Finally release that 85 millimeter F1.4, which every portrait photographer needs, right? Yeah. And charge a full $2,000 oh. for that. So hurry those lenses up. And another suggestion for just getting more money out of your existing customers, but also your new customers, SnapBridge Cloud, I'm calling What's it. What's that, Tony? <laughs> this would be available as a firmware update for all existing SnapBridge cameras, and it would add cloud storage interconnectivity. Nikon would partner with probably an existing cloud storage provider and when you took pictures your camera would be able to automatically transfer those into cloud storage providing an instantaneous backup but also instantaneous synchronization to your smartphone, tablet, desktop or your network attached storage device. You'd be able to decide which pictures were transferred when and where it was stored. By making this a free firmware update for existing cameras, you would immediately be able to get a monthly fee out of a substantial portion of the millions and millions of cameras that you've already sold. I did some math on this. I tried to estimate the number of SnapRidge capable cameras that are already in circulation. If Nikon were able to convert 5% of those customers into paying $20 a month fee for some cloud storage, that would add up to about 6 billion yen in annual revenue. If they could convert 10% of those customers, it would add up to about 12 billion yen in annual revenue. That's a lot. And for new cameras that they sold with this capability, that could add up to $1,200 revenue over five years. Now, I picked a rather high $20 a month price point to reach these numbers. More typical cloud storage, like what Adobe charges, is $10 a month. Yeah. But Nikon can't necessarily hit the $10 a month 
price point because they don't have the infrastructure for hosting cloud storage. So they have to partner with somebody, which means they're handing a chunk of the profits to some other company. And also, I think the benefits of this will be so high that a large portion of the customers will be willing to pay more. But once you get somebody using your cloud storage, they will have to stick with you and they have to keep paying every month and getting that monthly income helps Nikon in so many ways. It helps to smooth out the revenue curve. They're no longer just making a big bunch of money when they release a new camera or a new lens. Now people are paying them every month and they have this kind of guaranteed income. It makes it harder for consumers to switch to different brands because now if we switch from Nikon to Sony, our workflow doesn't change. We take the memory card out, we put it in our computer, everything's the same. But if you get accustomed to having this sort of automatic cloud storage transferring your files from one place to another. That would be so nice. And then you gave that up to switch to a different, you wouldn't want to give it up, right? No. Because you're not just changing your camera, you're changing your entire workflow. Yeah. So your customers would become stickier. They would have to stick with Nikon or give up this important feature that they love. This could be done with software and a partnership with cloud storage. Cloud storage is a huge, incredibly profitable business for a reason and all camera companies should be trying to get into it, but especially Nikon. Yeah. And the third part of our plan is cut. How can Nikon cut costs? Don't don't do it right now. Nikon is a company has been making so much extra cash that they've just been giving out dividends to all their stockholders. They don't don't give out so much cash. You need to invest. You can turn yourself around, but you're not going to be doing it by cutting your R and D. You start cutting your R&D, you start cutting your sales staff, and you start cutting your marketing, you're going to be cutting your sales too. And then there's only one way you can go. True. I want to ask people, how can Nikon turn themselves around? Knowing that they're unprofitable right now, and that is unsustainable. They can't keep doing the same thing. They have to change. So what should it be? Should it be software? They're talking about getting into AI. Do you think that's going into the right direction? And what would it take to earn you back if you used to shoot Nikon? Or what would it take to make you stay if you're shooting Nikon right now? I'm interested to hear all of your takes. And I bet some people think it can't be done, that they can't turn it around. I think and it maybe can be they done. should just close up shop. No. But I'd like to hear why people think it can't be done. This is the Picture This podcast, and we want to thank our sponsor, Squarespace. If you want an amazing website that makes your photos or your business look amazing, head to squarespace.com slash Chelsea. You'll get a 14-day free trial, no credit card required. Set everything up, make it look great. And if you love it, you can use the coupon code Chelsea to get 10% off. Thanks, Squarespace. Thanks for using my coupon code, Tony. <laughs> See you all next week. Bye.